Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a PTP rune deck for Unlimited. This one piqued my interest because PTP usually I don't see too many of those in a rune deck and in this case it's actually an Abyss Summoner deck which makes a lot of sense. I mean if you're going to run a rune deck with PTP you may as well run Abyss Summoner. After all you are burning cards off so you will gain the advantage fairly early on. So mainly the idea of course being to burn cards with Altered Fate and Path to Purgatory, get cards with concentra Concentration, and just use everything else as a supporting package. So Petrification to remove real sticky things, Prince of Magic again to remove things that are a little bit of a pain, Magic Illusionist because it has really high value with the Earth Sigils, and pretty much everything else is just in support of that, so not really bad overall at all, so we may as well get into it and check it out. So the only trouble I really had with this deck was getting PTP to go off quick enough. That was really the big struggle when trying to play this as you really can't do much against an aggro deck as you're just really on the back end. You can try and bait a lot of turns but then you're wasting a lot of time that you could be using to potentially get your altered fate and draw a lot of cards. So as you can see here I did throw the per Path of Purgatory back into the deck in favour of drawing a card and altered fate was what we drew which is okay. I do tend to keep Altered Fate. I used to, in some decks, play it on two. I am thinking maybe running the spell that draws cards from discarding might be better, but overall this deck is just a little awkward for what that I, the way I've been playing it. I feel like if I played it some more, I could probably get the hang of it a little bit and probably make it a bit more consistent plays-wise, but overall I felt like I had to play Path to Purgatory there. Really just had to get it out. I didn't really have any other big play as I definitely wanted to put something on the board this turn. At least we have a decent turn next turn. I mean, we have Witch Hunter, which is going to use one of these Earth Sigils up. Surprisingly, one of the few decks that really abuses her bur uh, burn effect to kill something, which is great. Of course, Mysteria does a pretty good job of that as well, so no big surprise. Any deck that is heavy on Earth Sigils should do a pretty decent job. But everything else is just pretty okay. I mean, these dwarves are good at giving you a card, which is always nice. Usually it's Cladimus Curse or Magic Illusionist. But overall, just really kind of good value. The Evos would be better if he was a 2-2 two, two, two into a 4-4, four, four, which I feel like these days he could easily be. Definitely would look at buffing him in the future if it was me, but who knows. So we've worked our way up. We're at 7 currently. That's not really quite high enough to really end this. And we've already got our opponent down quite a bit. Of course, that doesn't mean things will go in our favour. It's very easy for a rune opponent to just decimate boards. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. Of course, it seems like they might be actually running a PTP variant as well. Just a slightly different one. As you don't run Trials of Light in too many deck variants. Unless it's Dragon, which has some discard effects. But honestly, just an interesting, interesting card. So we have the chance to play Cladimus Curse and throw down an Earth Sigil again. I mean, keeps our Illusionist alive. I believe I probably could have attacked with the Illusionist there and I just completely missed it, which is disappointing. And they are going to clean up this Magic Illusionist, which unfortunately is not what I would like to see. As you can see, Path to Purgatory is definitely not the easiest thing to pull off in this deck. I would definitely recommend playing something like Puppet Path to Purgatory or uh, even even Forest Puppet up uh, there. Yeah. Forest's Fairy Path to Purgatory is pretty decent. But as far as things right now are, this is definitely a more awkward position to be in. At least our Illusionist should absorb some cards here. And even if it doesn't, it's still a solid body. So, I did, I think, almost miss this Abyss Summoner Lethal. While it wasn't a Path to Purgatory lethal, it was good enough, honestly. Because this is still a fairly good way to go for it, being able to burn cards and just go face. But I really liked using this, that was quite a fun way to go for it. Burn your cards, hope to get another one. So this second game is much more Path to Purgatory heavy, as it's a pretty key card in the Dragon matchup. To have, you can't really get around with Abyss Summoner quite as much against Dragon just because of how good Dragon's value cards are with its big drops. But I mean, you can't go too wrong either. I mean, we drew all four drops, a bit disappointing. But now we've got a couple of decent one drops to use. 
Witch's Cauldron and Scrap Iron Smelter are both pretty decent. Witch's Cauldron on one though is really good because it does allow us to set that up for a future draw. And a Silent Laboratory is quite good as well. I have considered like running something like a, a just one Silver Blade or something like that that would give you just that little bit of a way to burn Earth Sigils or something, but I haven't really decided whether that would be the way to play this deck. So we do have a Scrap Iron Smelter. Not really too useful. It's mainly just going to blockade this. We don't have any way to burn these sigils yet. So that's a little bit of a disappointment, but I mean, when your turn for attack is your only really good play, it's not too many options. And it looks like they're going to have a really solid play. So we need a way to clear this. Unfortunately, Witch Hunt is actually not too bad. Especially with a Scrap Iron backup, meaning we don't have to worry about losing everything here. A Scrap Iron should absorb most of it. Of course, another ramp card. It's always the way, I mean, you go for a card, you expect, okay, I should do pretty well, and then it just gets eaten alive anyway. At least we should be able to kill that fairly quickly. I mean, Witch Hunt will do the job, so why not? I'm not too worried about these little low one drops. At least not yet, I'm not. So set up a okay hand. I would like to use Altered Fate on a much bigger hand. So lacking draw power right now is not really the way to go. Hmm, another scrap line. So at least we can go for the Golem Assault and set up a defensive line. At the same time, bolstering our hand just enough that hopefully this Altered Fate will have some decent value. I probably should have just went for the Altered Fate, hoped to like double Altered Fate without losing paths, but I feel like taking risks like that um, can lead to a really, really bad time. So I did decide to go for the path and the blocks, I just didn't want to deal with it. I feel like wards at the moment are my best friend because they're going to block out some pretty decent damage. Of course, Imperial Dragoon. So this is a discard dragon, which was definitely a unique match. I rarely see big discard dragon decks that are running Dragoon these days, so it's nice to see one like this. Unfortunately, I did end up drawing a second Altered Fate, which really lowers the chances of me drawing another one. But we are very close to having our paths go off. We don't need much at all at this point, and Cogliostra should be a good way to buy us the time that we're going to need. I mean, we're going to burn a sigil from the Evo, which gives us one. We're going to play Arzmanga for two. We have the potential that this 5-3 gets destroyed to put us at 29. And with a Dwarven Alchemist and double path, we've actually got the chance for lethal. All we need is for that to die, and for us to be able to go face with this Dwarven Alchemist. Oh, sorry, go to kill the 5-5 with Dwarven Alchemist. That will put us at 30, and a path to Purgatory will be 18 damage. Absolutely stellar path to Purgatory play. I really liked this one. Just because of getting 18 damage off them is an absolutely amazing time. It's always great when you can go for a lethal like that. So while this deck definitely isn't as good as just straight up Abyss Summoner, it's definitely a fun one and it gave me something interesting to play, so definitely got to give it props for that. Outside of that though, would I recommend it for any normal person to play? Probably not. It's definitely not worth investing in this deck, but if you've got the cards to play it, give it a go. It's a little bit of fun and when you do pull off those Path to Purgatories, you do feel pretty good just absolutely stomping the board with them. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. You will find the deck list in the description below, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.